Whoa! I'm gonna kill a plant. Hello. Today we're gonna be some shooting with the Tamron 90mm macro uh, just to see what kind of images it produces and how we like it. Let's get into it. So today we are working with uh, the Tamron 90mm macro. It's been out for a couple years, but we're getting into prime macro season, and I want to take a look at what images this produces and uh, what it's like to shoot with today, and if it's still something really worth your consideration. As always, everything that we do here is brought to you by Camera Lessons Online. That's the business and the website where I've got a four-hour introduction to photography course. Uh, I've got several books that I've published, uh, one of them on macro photography. I'll put a link in the, just in the description. Go check it out. So today we're working with the Tamron 90mm macro and first I just want to show you some images of what this guy can produce and then we'll talk about some of its features. Let's go. So some uh, features of the lens, first of all, uh, this is a full frame compliant one to one ratio uh, macro lens. If you don't know what the macro ratio is, go check out a video that I made on it. Uh, uh, we've, we've covered that and it's pretty simple to understand. Uh, this is full metal construction and it is gasketed. It is one of Tamron's SP or superior performance lenses, which means it's their high end glass. It means it's full metal construction. Uh, and it feels really nice uh, in the hand, feels good to work with, but it's not really too heavy by any means. Uh, we do have a couple things that are very nice about the construction. First of all, large manual focus ring with about 180 degree uh, uh, rotation in the manual focus, which you want a long manual focus pull because we want to be very finite in our focusing when we're doing macro imagery. Other features that are particularly useful, of course, autofocus, manual focus. We have stabilization in this lens on and off. And let's get into that right now. I'm going to show you some images shot at a 15th of a second with stabilization and without stabilization. So I think the stabilization works very well. I was able to handhold this uh, shooting at a 15th of a second and uh, I would normally not want to shoot macro imagery at a 15th of a second but you can with this lens. So today I'm shooting it on uh, a Canon EOS R with uh, the Canon adapter and it's working great through that adaptation which is brilliant. Other features on the lens, uh, of course autofocus, manual focus, but we have a focus limiter switch on it. Now that's useful because uh, a focus limiter switch tells a lens to limit where it searches in autofocus. And macro imagery uh, is known for having lenses that are slower in focus than average lenses because it's got so much range that it can pull through. So if we limit that, we're going to find what we're looking at faster. And not only that, it's going to be able to do a focus pull uh, more quickly. And a couple things are really beneficial. First of all, the uh, macro limiter works very well. The second thing is that this is a relatively new focusing motor and so I find that it pulls focus very fast, which is, which is a nice thing to work with. The focus limiter on this particular lens is a third of a meter to a half of a meter uh, for the macro portion. And then it's from half a meter to infinity uh, through the rest of it. So if you use this lens for portraiture, uh, you'd use it at the half meter to infinity marker and it'll find your subject perfectly well. Uh, shooting uh, around here with these wildflowers, I've been using it with the, uh, with the macro uh, limiter turned on and that's been uh, really good for me. The last thing, of course, we do have a window in here and that's gonna show focus distance, uh, what the ratio is, uh, and the distance is given in both feet and meters. So very, very useful uh, as I'm doing manual focus pulling um, with it. So now uh, I've got two cons that I want to talk about with the lens. The first one is going to be focus breathing. This thing focus breathes more than an average lens. And if you haven't seen focus breathing in action, here you go. So focus breathing 
is where as I'm changing the uh, actual focusing distance of a lens, the focusing, uh, the focal length slightly changes and that changes the edge of the frame. And we notice this in macro imagery where we don't notice it in portraiture or landscape shooting. And uh, pretty much any macro lens that you pick up breathes, but this one has quite a bit of breathing in it as I'm working with the lens. Uh, that means that if I'm setting up my shot, particularly on a tripod, I might need to totally reposition my camera because the frame will change dramatically on me as I pull focus. Second con, I've been using this lens um, periodically uh, since it came out uh, several years ago. And one thing I've noticed with the uh, various versions that I've had is more than other lenses, um, more than other primes, this has a tendency to collect dust underneath the front element. It's very noticeable. It's happened with every version of this that I've had, more so than other lenses uh, in similar conditions. Now, I wanna be very clear, when you collect some dust underneath your front element, it's too close to the optics to actually show up in your image. And so uh, all of the images that you're seeing as we go through this, uh, you know, there's dust underneath the front element of this particular lens, uh, and you're not gonna see it in the images, but it is annoying and it's not something I particularly like. So um, that's, that's one uh, aspect of it that I don't love. Um, on the other hand, let's talk about something that's spectacular about this lens, and that is that it's not aperture variable. Um, lenses uh, that are macro lenses, historically, most of them are aperture variable. Now you might think, how can a prime lens be aperture variable? Well, a lot of lenses lose a stop of light as they approach the one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, one example of this would be the Nikon 60 millimeter macro, um, which is labeled as a 2.8, but it's really a 2.8 to f4, because as you hit one-to-one, -one, uh, that particular lens um, is f4. This lens is 100% 2.8 from infinity to one to one ratio, which is wonderful. Now, one thing I wish this lens had, this is my other kind of con about it, I love having uh, an aperture ring on a lens. This does not have that. Um, something that I, I kind of wish that it had. Uh, that would have been, uh, been nice. That would have been nice to work with. Uh, but I've taken this, I've shot it, pointing it with light sources inside of the frame. I've shot it with heavily backlit subjects and the anti-coating, uh, anti-reflective coatings on this really do not glare. So very, very nice construction. Uh, so let's do a little bit more shooting. So lastly, let's talk about detail and sharpness. Uh, I've found this to be a very sharp lens to work with. I've shot with it, both the Nikon and the Canon mount, uh, and I found it to be sharp in, in both versions. So I wanna show you uh, an image here, and we're gonna take a look at both the center of the frame and the corners. One image that I wanna take a look at in photo editing is this one, uh, shot just directly down on this stone uh, in my yard. And so we should be flat to the plane all the way through the frame. And so if we take this guy and we go in, let's look at 100% in the center, uh, we expect it to be really good and we get a lot of detail. And I've consistently been able to produce a lot of detail, a lot of color richness, a lot of contrast off of this lens. But now let's do the, the tougher test and let's take a look at our corners. So let's go over here to camera left. Uh, which holds up really well. Uh, we're, we're losing some detail relative to the center here at the very edge, but it, it's not all that much. Now let's go up here to the very uh, top left corner. And again, uh, it's a very um, minute amount of loss relative to the center, which is really nice to see. Uh, so let's move over to the camera right side corner, and we're gonna take a look there. And yeah, we've got a little bit of loss uh, in the top right corner. Um, and I would say a little bit more than on the top left. But still, I mean, we're looking at the very edge of the frame, and I think it's holding up nicely uh, relative to other lenses. We come down here about halfway through, and we're looking even better, especially right here. We only start getting lost in this very last edge. Um, so if I come down, let's do the bottom left corner. Bottom right corner, there was a little bit of shadow, so I apologize for that. Um, and down here, 
I'm definitely losing some detail right in this area, particularly with this rock here. But we come just a little bit away from it, and we've got very reasonable uh, amounts of detail very close to the edge. So what that amounts to me is that this has uh, some pretty significantly good edge-to-edge -edge sharpness uh, all the way across it, and I'm, I'm very impressed by that. So let's wrap this guy up. Um, this is a spectacular lens. It, it's not perfect. It's not. There's something with the gasketing that lets in dust underneath the front element. Its focus breathing is, is a lot of travel uh, to it, but it's one-to-one. -one. Uh, the color reproduction is beautiful. The detail's beautiful. The stabilization works like a charm. The focus limiter uh, is uh, wonderful, and for a lens of this caliber macro, I would say necessary. Um, and it is set up that it's working great on adapted cameras. You know, it'll, it'll adapt perfectly right now onto an EOS R. So this is a highly recommended lens. For 650, I just don't think you find a better macro lens. And in fact, I would argue that I would personally shoot with this lens over Nikon's 105. Uh, and I would shoot with it over Canon's 100mm L-Series right now, both for detail and for other features. So that's it. Um, great lens to work with. We're getting into macro season, and I hope that you have a lot of fun with it, whatever lens you end up shooting with. Uh, as always, if this was fun or entertaining or maybe a little bit educational, give us a like, give, give us a subscribe. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.